Howdy, I'm Matt, and in this episode we are going to be taking a look at the Foxeer Cat 2 night FPV camera and we are going to take a look at what's inside of the box right now. However, what we're going to also do is that I have the Zo HD Dart 250G. We're going to be replacing the camera which is in the nose currently and seeing how this camera fares in three different conditions. And those conditions are dusk, bright sunshine, complete darkness, and maybe dawn as well. So that's gonna be a real test for this camera, but before we go any further, let's get this unboxed and take a look inside. So inside the box, obviously we've got the camera, we've got our wiring rig as well with the default connector off to a standard flight controller with our little clip on there as well. We also have the sensing wire as well which we can provide the VBAT or our battery voltage to the camera and display that on our screen as well. Obviously we have the camera. Now this is the mini not the micro to be completely honest with you. Uh, when I asked Foxeer to send me one of these so that I could see what it was like and share you with you the results uh, I would have frankly preferred the micro rather than the mini because if you take a look at the size of that and the size of the model Yes, weight is definitely a concern. So just be aware there is a smaller version available if you want that too. Uh, looking at the camera itself is that we take a look at the lens that the lens is disproportionately large which makes sense for a camera which is going to be used at night because we need to get more of those photons in there so that we can see what's going on. I'm going to put that cap back on there. Uh, we have the two standard different types of motor mount. You've got your normal upright and also you've got your quad motor mount too. You get your OSD board as well. Now for absolute clarity I am not going to change any other settings than these. A, I'm going to change it to PAL, and B, I'm going to change the resolution to 16 by 9. And the reason why that I'm going to change that is because that's my preferred config. However, if you wanted NTSC and 4x3, you can knock yourself out, you can change that on your own camera. Also in the bag is a collection of little screws and goodies as well and of course we also did receive a sticker. Now you may have guessed just there for 100% clarity, I went to Fox Ear and Fox Ear is supporting this video because I asked for this camera specifically because I've tried other FPV cameras and I've had mixed results and let's face it, at the time of recording right now, this video is literally uh, at the end of July, beginning of August, within the next two or three months here in the UK fingers are gonna get start getting dark and I'm gonna want to fly at night hence that's why we've got this one on the desk now looking at the specifications for this camera uh, it is a 0.001 Lux night FPV camera with low latency now that is key the reason why I say key is because if we take a look at or you have to take my word for it that's the camera which is in there is the Cadillac Rattel Starlight that camera is pretty good to be fair I've got a separate video on my channel which I'll put in the top right hand corner or at least in the video description and that camera is pretty good it is good in full-blown daylight it's great at dusk and it's fantastic at dawn however when it's pitch black in the middle of the night Wow not very exciting okay you can just about pick out details if you're lucky and I did land into a tree which I may have included a little video bit on there as well I literally could not see where I'm going now the curiosity and the one piece of feedback which I've had from fellow FPV pilots about this camera before doing this review on it is that the field of view is a little bit weird. So before, rather than me explain it, I'll show you uh, and I'll put a link to this on their website which is that in the 16 by 9 configuration, which will be my preferred configuration for the camera, the field of view is 115 degrees horizontal and 145 degrees uh, in diagonal, is that right? It's n not normal, so we'll be looking out for that. And I, I, to be honest, I've got to be I've got to be happy, and you would probably be happy. Is that yes, if we have a slightly different or smaller or stranger field of view for being able to fly at night, I'm happy with that. I need to set that marker right now. However, 
I really want to see how this camera does at night. And right now, I don't know. So what I'm going to be doing is taking this camera uh, and fitting it in the front of the Dart 250. Then I'm going to go and fly it out. And I'm looking outside right now. And it's bright sunshine. And we'll take a look at that. Then we'll go off and see what it's like in at in, in, in dusk. And then we'll go and see what it's like in the middle of the night and I'll probably I've got some woods just next to me which you can't really get darker than darker in, in the woods can you and so it doesn't matter if there's even some starlight uh, they'll block it out and we'll go and see how this camera handles a really really dark situation which is the reason why I asked Fox here. So with that said, what I'm gonna do is cut to some FPV footage. Now just be aware, this is DVR footage. This is footage which has been recorded uh, on a little uh, screen which I've got here. Uh, and then I'll add some commentary on top. So just be aware we are gonna do full blown sunshine. We are gonna, because we've got to do full sun, full size, full blown sunshine, I've got to spit my words out, because the, then we're not going to change our cameras out just because it's daytime, are we? So we want full-blown sunshine to make sure it's not completely washed out. We want to see what it's like in the evening, and we want to see what it's like when it's completely pitch dark. So we'll put that up on the screen. I'll add some commentary. And with that said, let's get that bird. Well, I need to get that installed in that model, which is going to be child's play, because I'm going to chop that off and put a servo connector on the end. <gasps> And then let's go and fly it and find out what it's like. So I've been in the store, the Cat 2 on the front of the model, and I've got to be completely honest with you, it is a bit big for this model, and given the choice between this one and the mini or the smaller one, definitely go for the smaller one, especially if you've got a smaller model. Although, if you feel that you might be landing it in trees quite frequently, then go for the larger uh, camera, because it might be a little bit more robust. Right, with that said, first, literally, first impressions is that, if I turn this back on and off again, uh, is that the quality on it is really good in bright conditions. So here in the office, we have a great big bright light above us, uh, and I have stuck it outside of the window, and like I said, first impressions, uh, you will see there on the camera, which is now turned to black and white. That, that, you've got to love this, haven't you? I'll tell you what, I'm going to go and hit record uh, on there like so cool right we're recording on there the picture quality when it does come out of color on the screen and it's the screen's fault not the camera's fault is absolutely fantastic uh, it's just a nice color camera uh, if i turn this around and take a look at me and you see the back of the box it is just a nice fpv camera it is doing particularly well uh, and we'll just move it around and you can see how much foam i've got up there on the side uh, it is just doing perfectly fine and actually it's just been flicked here to color for me uh, and it's doing exactly as i expected uh, it is and i'm wearing a bright red top we can see that on there uh, and it is it's just slightly more saturated than what it is in real life exactly the kind of view which i'm expecting to see from an fpv camera all round, first impressions, pretty good. So what we're gonna go and do now, let's go and get it in the sky. Uh, we're gonna fly it around. Like I said, it's, uh, I'll, when I get to the flight, I'll give you like a rough time in the British summertime. Uh, it should be pretty bright out there. Uh, and we'll take a look to see how it handles. And then we'll start up in the game uh, and see what it's like at dusk or very early in the morning, like I mentioned a few moments ago. Uh, and then in the pitch, darkness as well in some woods to see how it ha acts but I wanted to give you my first impressions which were right for just normal FPV thumbs up let's come and see how it does at the other end of the spectrum and of course in the sky too so we're just getting ourselves set up here and you can see the saturation in the camera itself that's fine for because like, I like that especially when we're dealing with multiple greens you can see the greens very clearly there and oh by the way there's loonies loonies is my little miniature schnauzer uh, she's about to get thrown away off you go you little monkey because she shouldn't be there with me so yeah get back to the camera itself yes one thing to notice and it's quite obvious when you look in here is that the sharpness 
of the image is very, very obvious. Now, actually, here we go. We're up into the sky now. Uh, by the way, there are a couple of harsh cuts in here just because I was flicking to a rear, rear view camera, which is actually a Foxeer Razor Nano, but that's a topic for a different day. Uh, you will see that we are going right into the sun uh, and we can see between the bright sunshine above, we can see the clouds in the sky and we can see what's going on, on the ground. So we do have a decent range of colors uh, and we can see what's going on in the sky itself. Now in a few moments time we, get, we are going to turn around and be over some different structures and this is where it's really kind of obvious. The picture is definitely oversaturated although it did just get better then you must admit uh, and you can clearly see, define it, see the definitions of the fields below uh, and the colors are yeah oversaturated but remember these are default settings I have not changed a single thing and also keep in the back of your mind the primary interest of this camera is to see how well it does at night and if it does all right in the day then that's happy days you've got to admit that it's doing fine for daytime FPV let's flick this around and see what it's like at dusk and right in the middle of the night as well so now we are very, very late evening. The sun is starting to go down. Now, you won't appreciate, <laughs> I've just seen myself sticking thumbs up uh, on the camera, how, actual, how dark it is right now. Uh, and I've cut to a photo so you can actually see how dark it is. Uh, and I, yeah, the, the picture, it's still in color which is quite surprising. And we've just been in cut to some flight footage now. So you'll see that we've been in the sky. I've kind of got used to it. And I have noticed this like little dark patch on the right hand side. Now that does disappear with some with a settings change, which I will get to a revelation in a few moments time. But I really wanted to kind of like show you the, the default settings as it arrives to me and it would to you out of the box. So the first thing to note is that it really has got quite dark uh, and that I've felt compelled to run the LEDs underneath the Dart 250G, which by the way, I've got a separate review. I'll put a link to that in the video description, uh, which is a really cool model. Anyway, the light has really started to go. And when we are flying away from the sun which we were doing just a few moments ago is that you could see that there was a really nice contrast between the sky and the ground however when we turn around and fly back towards the sunset and you can really see that the sun's down the street lights are on we can see the reflection in a river uh, it, it's we are struggling in this instance, and remember, I just want to stress these are default settings, and I'll get to a settings change in a moment. We are struggling with that really wide dynamic range of colors right now because we are dealing with uh, like dark sky with a really bright band in the middle. This is like the best test of an FPV camera, and we can actually see that the Foxit is struggling a little bit here in this specific scenario with the default settings. Now, I keep mentioning these settings, we will get to that in a moment and a revelation when it comes to that. Uh, and now, th this is actually later on uh, in the flight and we will see that we are now flying away from the sunset and this is really good. You've got to admit, it is perfectly flyable. You wouldn't believe how dark it is or was right then when I was recording this. This is perfectly flyable. Uh, and I actually kind of quite enjoyed this view, uh, especially coming from that view just a few moments ago. Although I will still point out that dark patch on the right hand side. I think that was something to do with the DWR metering, uh, which I changed in the settings, which I keep mentioning. So with that said, I think we've seen enough footage here to, to try to, to, to make an informed decision, which is that when we are going away from the sunset, absolutely fine when we are going towards the sunset and remember we've got that really ultra high contrast is that with the default settings not ideal and we need to do something about that also that i was starting to realize that this camera is not going to form perform get me words correctly 
perform well in really dark conditions. And I think that is unfair, and you can be the judge of this, that would be unfair for me to expect that a $30 or so camera, or $50, whatever it is, uh, is not full-blown night vision, is it? It really does need some light. So this is where I re-evaluated the, uh, the, the situation, uh, and uh, I came back home, and, well, landed just a field just off from here, uh, and then made... Uh, I did a quick search and I found some updated settings. So what I'm going to do, we're going to jump out, ironically, in the car. Uh, and the reason why we're going to jump out in the car is because you will now see me in the office uh, and you'll see it's full blown light, absolutely fine in daylight, really nice, sharp, crisp image. Uh, if a little bit saturated, which personally I've, made, I've mentioned this before, don't mind that much. And then you'll see me walking down the drive. Uh, and what I then, it's impossible to fly at night, okay? As in, it's impossible to fly in full blown pitch dark darkness. So, this is where I reevaluated the, uh, the situation. I changed some settings, which I've got up on the screen for you right now. And we jump out in the car and go somewhere where this camera would perform at its absolute best. And this is where this camera really does perform. I've been in change those settings, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, and you could drive like this. You could drive on a road with this FBV camera. Imagine, uh, and this is nice street ambient lighting, and this is uh, this is my the, the, the revelation when it came to this camera, is that it needs ambient lighting to work effectively. Me and you expecting it to be a full night vision camera is completely unfair to the camera and the scenario which you're in. However, imagine that you're in a multi-rotor right now or you're in a wing, you would be able to, if it was allowed to, in inverted commas, spank that little monkey straight up the high street uh, and do lots and lots of stuff and feel really confident in what was going on. You're now see me pulling in to a car park and this is where I've seen this camera perform really really well and what you don't hear is me scraping out the bottom of the MX-5 on the speed bumps however once we get into the car park and you'll see me take and it, the picture which you're seeing is going through the dashboard so it's not that's not helping at all but we'll take the camera out now we'll take it off the dashboard and we'll take it outside can you imagine that you're in a multi-rotor right now or even uh, a fly flying wing or another model you and I would feel very confident in smashing a model around in that car park with that FPV camera. And I think that's where I need to end this review, which is that in the daytime, it's sharp and you have nice saturated colors, which of course you can alter. However, where this camera comes into its own element is that when you've got ambient lighting. So if you wanna go out and fly with your mates, and smash a multi-rotor around a car park or similar kind of scenario where there is some ambient lighting, that is the perfect location for it. And like I said, I would feel confident chucking a flying wing around that car park, although I technically shouldn't do. Uh, I, If I did chuck one in the sky, it would work. So there we go. That is my final verdict on the Foxeer Mini Cat 2. In the right scenario, it is absolutely brilliant. It's one of those cameras which you would be able to use in dawn, you would be able to use for the day, and then when you wanna go out with your buddies and smash a multi-rotor, quad, whatever you wanna call it, or a wing around a car park and have a whale of a time, really good match. However, full blown, middle of the night, probably not. And I don't feel we're being fair to it to expect it to be a full blown night vision camera. So with that said for myself, Matt, I want to say a massive thank you to you for taking the time to join me here for this review of the Foxeer Mini Cat 2. Like I said back at the beginning, I actually contacted Foxeer for this camera so they could send it to me for review because I'd seen so many good reviews of the camera. Uh, now, one thing which I'd picked up uh, in other people's and other owners' comments about this camera was the field of view. I've got, I've got to be honest with you, I didn't really notice any issue with the field of view. It looks 
on the camera or on the screen just as it looks to me in the goggles. I didn't have an issue with this, uh, but do remember I am using Pearl and I am using 16 by nine and I am using Fat Shark goggles. So might be that combination why I'm not picking it up. I'll let you make your own informed decision from the FBV footage, which you've been seeing here. So with that said, for myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here for this episode. Remember, if you're new here, howdy, I'm Matt. Don't forget to press that subscribe button and of course to press the bell notification so that YouTube notifies you when the next video is out. It could be a review of an FPV camera like this one, or we could be dispatching a model, or we could be on board with the Dart 250G. Anyway, with that said, time for me to go. I'll catch you again very shortly. From myself, Matt, cheerios!